All right, a pause in the action on the Eric St. Show podcast to talk about Factor. Okay, there was a time not that long ago where I would spend a lot of time on, let's say, a Sunday, like hours, getting food ready for the week, prepping so that I could have something ready to go in a nice, convenient container. Problem with that is I'd spend a whole Sunday doing it. It was expensive. And frankly, I was eating the same food all the time. So it's easy to figure that after a couple of weeks, I kind of gave up on that. Now, I remember at the time thinking it would be great if I could have food delivered to me. I don't have to lift a finger to make it. And it's prepared by chefs and it's fantastic and so convenient and so delicious and fresh, never frozen. Voila! Factor. Look, I know you love supporting me. That's one of the key things that makes a podcast survive is when you support who's doing the show. I want you to just try this and you are going to be so happy. Go to factormeals.com slash Zane 50. That's Zane 50. And then use code Zane 50 and you're getting this for 50% off. That's how badly I want you to try this. Just so you can see how easy and convenient and awesome factor is. That's code Zane50 at factormeals.com slash Zane50 to get 50% off. Oh, and I'll include the link in the show notes of this podcast. This November, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door, ready in just two minutes. No prep. No mess. You are eating amazing food. You're eating well. It's so fantastic. Again, factormeals.com slash Zane50 and use code Zane50 to get 50% off. That's code Zane50 at factormeals.com slash Zane50 to get 50% off. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome in. It is um, same hoodie day. Yeah. Woke up. Same thing as always. The clothes that I was wearing yesterday, side of the bed, get out of bed, actually still sitting on the bed, put on yesterday's hoodie. Uh, Unrepentant. I love it. It's like my favorite thing to do. Just wake up. Ah, whatever. Fuck it. New underwear for sure. But I, I'm of the opinion that the hoodie is not actually dirty. You know, I wear a shirt underneath it and it's not like I'm going to go out and start running mile repeats in it. You know, by the way, I miss that. I miss the exhaustion. I know it sounds weird, but until the, uh, until the knee went out, I, I used to love having like the occasional real big lung burner workout, which I cannot do anymore while running. I would have to do it like, I don't know, on one of those Pelotons or in the pool when I'm like, and I'm like, ah, I don't know, maybe one day I'll just take my leisurely walk through the neighborhood Everybody seems to agree hoodies are good for at least a week. Jeans, same thing, which is, which is weird because, you know, the jeans are around your butthole, for God's sake. You would think that, but no, I, I agree with you. Of course, you have underwear on. Who knew that I would start the show breaking down how to wear clothes? It's embarrassing. Uh... But all right, welcome in to the Eric Zane Show podcast, a daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures, if you haven't already figured that out. That seems to be a question I get a lot. So what do you do? What do you, what goes on on there? Yeah. The same thing I always did. Uh, Gives me someone to talk to, even though it's just a camera, for God's sake. The, The key to sanity is the chat. Okay. Now, chat is a double-edged sword. It provides a lot of content. Occasionally, though, it it gets wonky, and then I have to... Uh, Hold hold on. Then I've got... I got to flash the yellow, which looks more like lime green. I got to flash the lime green or the red, which looks more like orange. 
the uh, the chat actually caused a massive. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't say it caused it. It was part of the problem with the former Zaniacs. Um, the one in particular was that weirdo Adam and his styrofoam teeth. No matter what I said, he would grab lyrics from a song and put them up for no apparent reason. I was like, do you think maybe we could limit that? I'm actually trying to interact with people. And my God, just asking that was the end of the world for that thin skin twat. God damn it. Maureen is here. She says, well, easy. If you aren't shitting your pants, it's okay. And I'm not. And I am not. Ben Weller says, when you enter the chat, welcome to the jungle. Behind me, Darla and Bruce. uh, Sister and brother from different mothers. Amanda says Darla looks huge. She's really not. I, I, I'm starting to think that even though she didn't look like a runt when we got her, I mean, she is the smallest English bulldog we have ever had. Okay. She is not that much bigger than Bruce, who's a Frenchie, supposed to be smaller than her. She's a little shit. And uh, today, man... Talk about a day where it was um, pretty much a guaranteed thing that Darla decided she was going to take a dump in the house. Now, she didn't. I don't know how I got her to do this, but okay. When you open up the back door, she in particular is like, no, I don't do rain, let alone cold rain. But all right, I'll go outside and pee. She goes outside and pees and comes right back in. I go, this is not good. That means she made a decision. Okay. I am going to crap in the house. I am going to do that. And then she likes to eat it because she's a, she's horrible. It's unbelievable. What? How can that even be a thing? She comes in. I go, oh boy, we got to revisit this. I give her a breakfast and I bring her up here and she's just snooping around. I could tell as soon as they, See how right now that, that, uh, how she's like content. She knows that we're talking about her too. Hi, Darla. 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 She stops. Hey. Side eye. Love the side eye. Um, that's when you know you're in a good spot. When she's just sitting there enjoying the uh, morning, chewing on something, laying next to her brother. It was not like that when I came in here not that long ago. She was doing laps, want, uh, picking out the best spot to lay a loaf. I was like, oh, boy. So, brought her uh, downstairs, opened the door. Well, won't go. She's not going outside. Bring her back upstairs. Same thing. She's sniffing around. I go, all right, that's it. Miraculously, it stopped raining, and she knows that. I bring her outside. Hallelujah. She does it right back inside. I go, thank God. Oh, uh, shot a video of her yesterday. That, uh, Kenny said he loved it's worth mentioning and visiting and checking that out right now. I forgot all about it. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you for reminding me man who has a, uh, image on uh, Patreon of him ripped when he's a kid. Fit and trim. God, Kenny. You, I bet you pulled so much tail. Holy cow. Chewy's Purse writes, My dog had diarrhea downstairs this morning. Not a great way to start the day. Oh, I feel for you. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right, here she is. Counterfeiting everything from... It says the side eye looking for attention. I mean, she's acting like, you know, uh, she's being neglected or she's starving. Checks to digital coupons and bottle return slips. Targeting investigator Susan Samples reports that investigators... Sitting on mom's lap while she's watching the news. Say Angel hired people to cash in the fake... failure to motivate us 
it's something that I'm more uh, motivated to go in the direction of Oh, she's so abused, right, guys? Oh, that's... Look at that. Joe Morin says, pet her, please. Where you been, Joe Morin? She, this dog is so dramatic. I'm telling you. <laughs> All right, I can't take anymore. I cannot take anymore. Chris writes, she is such a baby, a giant baby. Oh, absolutely. Quote, how dare you rest your hand there and not use it to pet me? This dog has is such a character. I'm telling you. Florida man with a... Uh, with an uppercut from the back of the room says, sounds like Amanda using one of her dildos. You know, that's horrible. Uh, first of all, how would you know that you haven't been blessed with hearing Amanda? And, uh, when she's using one of her dildos, as far as I know. Okay. Why are you taking uh, a run at Amanda who says I'm actually pretty quiet. Okay. We don't need that. We don't need any comment. If anyone's going to talk about masturbating, it's going to be me. All right. So that's how it's going to be today. I guess. Uh, okay. Okay. Enough, enough. Settle down, settle down, everyone. Okay, um, my pal Doug over at Bosco's Pub is known for a bar trick, which I just found out about. What he does is um, there's a guy at the bar, let's say, and he's talking to him, could be anybody. Guy at the bar is looking up at the TVs that are above the bar. And let's say watching the Chiefs and the Eagles. Doug is also behind the bar, but facing the bar fly. Behind the bar fly is another TV with the same game. But the one that's behind the bar fly is like 10 seconds ahead of the one that's behind the bar. So Doug sees what happens in the play. And then 10 seconds later, it happens on the TV. That's actually behind the bar that the bar fly is looking at. So Doug will be standing there and he'll say, I bet number 10 gets it. And then the guy's just sitting there watching and then number 10 gets it. And then Doug will say, oh, I bet you they're going to be, it's going to be a screen pass. And then it'll be a screen pass. At this point, Barfly is like, wait, how do you, how are you knowing that? He goes, I, I know football. I know football. And then uh, he'll say something like, oh, fake punt right here. And then it's a fake punt. So uh, he does that and he'll start to bet. He'll start to like gamble. You know, he'll like uh, say something uh, really, really uh, far out. Like if it's a crazy ass play, it's going to be a touchdown, a flea flicker. And uh, number 16 is going to catch it in the end zone. And uh, he'll do that. And the guy says, all right, I'll bet you 20 bucks. And then Doug will put down and then Doug will win the bet. I found this out because it happened to me. Yeah. We're at the bar and he does that same setup. I was like sitting down, facing the bar, having a drink of water in between. It was very slow. The uh, Eagles and the uh, Chiefs are on and he starts that shit. And I have no idea of that. This is like a thing. I, I just doesn't occur to me. Now, um, the people next to me are also amazed. 
the chicks who are working behind the bar are aware of it and they're keeping their mouths shut. And they're like, they're like, uh, I was, I was, I couldn't believe it. I was like, what the fuck is happening here? So I said, all right. And then I started to record. And, um, this actually happened. So this is before I realized what was going on. And I don't know if it's on this footage, but after this, the chick who's working at the, who's uh, one of the, um, her name's Brittany. She says, yeah, he's watching it. Uh, we're watching it delayed. You're watching it delayed. He's watching it 10 seconds ahead of you. And she like broke the news to me, but this is, this is my reaction. Okay. <laughs> so Doug keeps predicting the play somehow. The replay, and you tell me you can just take a look. Okay, this isn't the play there. This is they're just measuring. He's gotten every play right. Offsides, next down. <laughs> he just said offsides, next down. Because now they're all spun. What? What did you say? Eagles are going offsides. They're going to jump. On the right side. If you get this, uh, you're gonna, I'm going to buy a lottery ticket right now. <laughs> okay, this is the replay still. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? What? Hold on. Look at Hold Doug's on. poker face. You got a phone or something there? Is someone? No, no. See, I, oh, he must oh, be watching that TV. Oh, someone, someone tipped me off. Yes, he must be watching that TV. God damn it. What an asshole. <laughs> oh, God. So much fun. That uh, was a good time over there. Uh, and I guess in that game, the um the Chiefs had a chance to win late, and uh, Mahomes aired it out, and some dude dropped it. Oh my god! And that's it. Fuck it, a Eagles win. Eagles nine and one. Chiefs are uh, seven and three. I kind of wanted the uh, Chiefs to win because that would have uh, uh the Lions would have a better shot at. Uh, you know, if the Lions keep winning, of winning the conference to have home field throughout the playoffs. But uh, goddamn, the Eagles are, are are tough. I don't know. I, I think um, ultimately it's going to be a rematch. I mean, I want the Lions to be there, but in my heart of hearts, the, the Lions just don't have it, at least right now, all together of getting to the Super Bowl. I still think that it will be the Chiefs taking on the Eagles. Okay? Um, so I, uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I mean, I love, like I said, I love the Lions. They've had some great moments this year, but uh, to me, there's just a few uh, loose ends that they just don't have the, the right thing to actually win. Amanda says, when are you back at Bosco's? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, you know, this is... Uh, I think next Tuesday, next Tuesday, actually, I take it back. I think I am sure next Tuesday I should be there. And uh, if you go, you're only allowed to have a salad. Uh, Jack underscore Ken underscore Knopf. Maybe a new person here. Says Eric. And then hello. Hello. Welcome. Yeah, Amanda, I thought we were, uh, I thought we had a uh, goal of saving our life. Weren't you in the process of saving your life? You know what you should do, Amanda? I just started with a new sponsor called uh, Factor. You know those Factor meals? Those things are awesome. Amanda says, I'm not allowed uh, a cheat night. Every day is a cheat night for you. Don't get me started. I know what's going on. Don't act like you've been good. Anyway, you should, um, 
those factor meals, I, I didn't, I wasn't until they sent them to me and I tried them. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't aware of how great they are. It's the same as like when, you know, like on a Sunday where I used to prep all those meals. Um, so, you know, and then it takes forever to prep a meal and it's always like, I mean, I don't have, I have the same food in every little prep container. Um, factor is great because it's all different food and it's not a ton of calories and it's all good and nothing's frozen and it's made by chefs and then they just package it for you and send it to you. I was really impressed with the quality of the food and, uh, they're actually a sponsor right now on the audio podcast. You don't hear about them, uh, when I'm actually live streaming, but they, their ads that I recorded, um, uh, popped up and um, and when you're on when listening to the audio podcast, man, I asked you know offhand how many calories, um, five fifty to six hundred, and typically you'll have like um, a smaller cut of pork chop with like uh, sautéed mushrooms and then green beans or something like that. Really effective if you want to actually uh, lose weight. You're eating really good food and um, uh, prepared fresh. I love it. Amanda says, but the meals I get are $5 each and they're 220 calories. Yeah, but it's those shit frozen ones you throw like uh, that are are, uh, loaded with sodium and sawdust and jizz. Okay. Factor meals are so much better for you and better tasting. Than the garbage you eat. Amanda's idea of dieting is busting out, uh, headed over to like the uh, gas station and getting some goddamn Jack Links. Oh yeah, it's diet food. All right. So glad you are here. Uh, a lot going on today. I I do have um some news. I talked about this on Patreon yesterday. Uh, my dad has COVID. Uh, after the free podcast, the word came down. So here we go. Um, phone call later in the day. Talking to my beloved mother-in-law, Joanne who indicated, uh, and she's walking around the house, she's, you know, she's exposed, wearing a mask. Uh, Dad felt like garbage the day before, um, and then they, you know, tested him and he got COVID. So, uh, okay, you know, um, a lot of elderly people have had COVID and and been just fine. Uh, Some have not. There's, There's no question that that's a concern. Uh, passing the fear off to God. That's what they say. That's what they say. You know, Hey, you got to take your fear and anxiety and just give it to God. He'll take it. So that's where I'm at. I'm in this, in this religious mode now. I mean, it's all you can do, honestly, uh, pray and hope. So, uh, keep him in your thoughts, keep him in your thoughts. And if you're like Kyle Ryan and you don't believe my Jesus stuff, just, uh, think good gay thoughts. That's all you have to do. Think gay. And then everything will be fine. We hope cannot control it. Um, so we'll miss them on Thanksgiving, but, uh, all right. You know, one of those things, um, it's up in the air. I, I, I don't, uh, I don't know if, um, if we're going to have him on tomorrow, um, for deer meathead. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll find out, see how he's feeling. Let's see. Maureen says maybe Amanda likes the taste of jizz. What the fuck? This is the women on my show talking. Maureen says no, she doesn't. What a time we live in when the ladies amongst them are talking about the flavor of jizz. God damn. All right. Suicide averted. In my neck of the woods. This is incredible. You know, body cameras, um, in addition to, uh, 
get into exactly exactly how stories go down when uh, cops are out in the field also lead to remarkable footage. So not far from where I live, uh, some guy was on the overpass and he's going to throw himself off of it uh, and plummet down to the uh, interstate freeway below uh, causing uh, his death. Uh, there's county sheriffs there and state cops there and they're, and they're trying to talk this guy down. And then, well, I'm just going to let this story play out. This is incredible. And contemplating suicide is alive tonight. Thanks to the compassion. It's, it's always low volume thinking on these two police officers. I don't know why that is. Police body camera video shows the events unfolding on a highway overpass November 11th in Byron Township. News 8's David Horak has the story for us tonight. I care for you. I'm, I... Okay, so um, on the side of the screen, that's the statey and the county cop. And the chick talking is a county cop. And this guy is dangling over the edge, seated on top of that concrete. I feel like you... At the M6 overpass above US 131, Kent County... Sh- That's what you say when someone's getting ready to throw themselves off. You got to tell them that you care about them, even if you don't. Sheriff Sergeant Tanya Walkins was pleading with the despondent man on the other side of the ledge. I have a son, oh, a little bit older than him, but I just kept telling him that he is loved and he is cared for and just kept trying to get him to look at me and direct him to look up, look up, because he just kept looking at his phone. If I go to the other side over there, I think we can get him. State Police Trooper Eric Brogger also noticed that time was not on their side while reading the man's body language. He was using his arms and kind of almost testing the friction underneath uh, on the seat there to see how much it was going to take to to go over. And that's when... How about that jawline, ladies? What do you think of that silver fox? When we made the decision that we had to act. At one point, I thought he was going to go. How about that jawline, guys? Um, because he started lifting himself, and I just started, yeah, I was just started talking louder and louder to distract him. Please look at my face! Please look at my face! It was a tough and... Look at that! They just snatched him! Risky move, Brogger says, that ended up saving the man's life. So she's telling... It, they're 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 like waiting for him to turn and she's trying to get his focus and then they come up behind him and snatch him and possibly others if he now if he were black they would have just kicked him in the back and you know he'd have been tumbling down and uh you know getting run over like uh fucking nordberg tried to go forward over that edge while we were holding on to him that he could take us with him we are here to help you brother it's gonna be fine all right Oh, okay. breaks my heart. Oh, no. There are better days, my friend. Walkins tells us the man is getting the help he needs after getting another chance at life. At that moment in time, he was at the lowest he's probably ever felt. And at some point in somebody's life, they get there. So, you know, just right. you know, telling him that he's cared for. Now, we couldn't see his face, but it wouldn't surprise me if he had like a uh, a Bluetooth thing in his ear and, and was talking about how he likes to jack off horses. I, I hope that he's better today and knows that he's loved. It didn't matter who the person was up there. Everybody just knew it was a person up there and they needed help. And that's what it's a reminder to anyone who is struggling that they are not alone and they are loved. If you or someone you know is going through hard times, call 988. We're in yeah. Byron Township. Yeah. David Horak. So this guy, I'm sure, is news eight. Is uh, is loved, but I mean, I've always had dreams. On- what if, like, it, you're you're a child molester or something like that? You know, and and everybody just found out that you're a child molester. That person probably isn't loved. Florida man 814 says if it was creepy Dean, he should have been pushed off. In all serious though, in all seriousness though, amazing work by this crew of officers. Good to see a good story once in a while. Uh, if you're going through hard times, Kenny writes, go sit on a bridge and wait for us to throw you to the ground and handcuff you against your will. There says, quote, <coughs> He's quoting the, the female officer. I'll suck your dick if you get down. Guarantee that would work 
every every time you asshole what the fuck dude i'll suck your dick if you get down oh my god i even forgot the jokes i had i had several jokes in my brain and they're all they're all muddied up now they're they're gone you did it to me you asshole Oh, there you go. That's what I was going to talk about, though. Uh, it wasn't a joke. Uh, Dan says, bridges are not high enough. You need a building or a parking deck. Yeah, I don't think we want to go and say, I mean, I was thinking the same thing, that the bridge could very well not kill you. Uh, but I don't know if it's a great idea to start saying, no, no, if you want to do it right, you got to do it this way. It was a horrible scenario. Uh, I'll never forget this. This is a uh, pulling back the curtain radio story. It involves a suicide. So I'm just going to get out in front of this. It involves a dead person. Um, where GRD is, it's across the street from a parking deck, which is, I don't know, uh, five, six stories. Enough to kill you because this guy died. But this was so surreal because we're doing the show and then uh, somehow word escapes that there's a guy laying on the pavement. If you look out the window, but we couldn't see him from our studio. We had to go into uh, uh, what I think the radio station is 100.5 the river. And uh, this, this really nice, sweet old man named Andy Rent is uh is on the air and he's still on the air to this day i think he's in his 80s and he plays like you know soft rock hits and christmas music and tells you where the uh you know he's not really doing anything groundbreaking he's, it's elderly people are listening to this radio station and andy's in there all shook up because he's, he's doing the show and his uh, where he talks, it faces the window. So he's like looking at this dead guy on the concrete. It was right around the holidays. And uh, graphically, this is horrible. Uh, the blood is like spreading on the concrete. And I'm standing there next to Joe and we go out there and this or not out there. We're in the, we're looking down as the police are arriving. And, um, uh, as, the, as they're arriving, we look down and this, uh, fucking Elvis Christmas song is playing. I think it's like blue Christmas. blue. It's like the soundtrack for the suicide. And we're looking down and we're like, oh my God, fucking shit. And Joe's all fucked up. It was horrible. There's a good Joe joke in there some, somewhere. But I figured I should leave that alone. Uh, Tyler says, can you imagine if he was playing fly like an eagle when the dude jumped yeah, I, probably not the best. Florida man 814 says, if you weren't telling the story, I would think you were making it up. No, unfortunately. And that that young man did not survive. That wasn't the first time uh, that we somebody died uh, out the window of the radio station. There was another young man who... Um, Okay, so this was actually outside of the GRD studios. Uh, we had a guy who worked at the radio station named Spud. And he was on in like the afternoon. And Spud was on the air and there was a window cleaner at the art museum across the street and something went wrong and he went down and he died. And Spud saw it. I mean, like actually saw him in the air uh, for the few seconds or the second and a half it took for him to, yeah, he saw that. And there's audio of him on the air 
You won't believe what I just saw. I mean, it was like the guy who announced the Hindenburg. It was horrible. And right now, if you were downtown Grand Rapids by the um, by the Graham Grand Rapids Art Museum, on the uh, east wall of that building, okay, if you're good with directions, the east wall of that building, across the street from um, uh, uh, what the fuck is that pizza place? Uh, doesn't matter. Uh. There's a plaque on the ground commemorating that, that, well, remembering him right where big O's that's it. Big O's right across the street from there. It's fucking horrible. Uh, there was also one more, I swear to God, this is the last one at iHeart. Uh, they're in, um, uh, that big ass building downtown. And this actually happened. I wasn't working there at the time. But someone was on the air and then actually in their line of sight, like the body just went right in front of the window. A fucking idiot made it up there and and took a header who I think lived. Tyler says, I don't know how those uh, window cleaners can do that job. They should make a million dollars a year. Various comments on, on Big O's. I love Big O's. Big O's is fantastic. Uh, it's been way too long since I've been there. But uh, glad that that dude's okay. Uh, hope I, but God damn, talk about a rock bottom moment. All right. Thank you to those who are watching the show on Facebook. And uh, also watching it on uh, X and YouTube. I'm going to say goodbye to you, though. Thank you so much. Don't forget about my Patreon, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Kind of a weird week for Patreon this week. You'll get a lot of, I'll get the uh, bonus podcast to you every day, Monday through Friday, the Lost Zane recording, Smarter Than a Former Drug Dealer Trivia, The Insane Asylum. But next week is when we'll be back for um, Smarter Than, I'm sorry, uh, the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. And who are these free beers? We, we still owe you an episode of Who Are These Free Beers? Uh, things got a little wonky for Ben last week with his dad getting sick and now my dad getting sick. Holy cow. Uh, but his dad is okay. So, uh, we'll get back after it next week with those shows, but thank you so much for checking out the show on Facebook X and Twitter. And if you want the show in its entirety, because it's not done, I've got another hour and 20 minutes left to do of, uh, today's show, November 21, Tuesday, uh, it's on Twitch. So download the Twitch app. Search Eric Zane live, and then there I am. Follow the page, subscribe to the page. It's all there for you. Very simple. And uh, Or if you're on your desktop or laptop, go to twitch.tv slash Eric Zane live. Thank you, though, for watching on Facebook X and YouTube. Uh, Facebook and Twitch brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Uh, getting closer to year number four. Of the great food giveaway. Um, That all started. Let's see. I was. I had just. Okay. I was in the process. Of um, donating the kidney. And I was in. At the UCLA. uh, On UCLA's campus. And. uh, Some guy named Denny Porter. Who's uh he reached out and he's he used to own that um not his wife owns that cleaning service. Was it A and D cleaning? So he'd check in from time to time and he said, Hey man, I want to donate money for a a family to uh have a meal on on the holidays or something like that. And I go, uh yeah, hey, you know, that's that's not a bad idea. And I talked about it, and then all of a sudden, uh the great food giveaway is born. And we uh we started the whole process. And it's happening for year number four. It's always been there at uh, Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. I'm pretty sure we settled on the date of uh, Thursday, December 21. I may have said 22 before, but it is Thursday, December 21. So one month away from right now. 
We will give all the food away at Irvine's. Don't yet have a time. I uh, haven't even started collecting money, but somebody already did uh, send money. Aaron, thank you so much. Uh, I don't even have the amount that we need to pay for all the food. So we still have time. It uh, it, it usually goes this way. But uh, again, just uh, pointing out that uh, we will be at uh, Irvine's again. I was reminded of that since they sponsor Twitch and Facebook. Maureen writes, I hope there isn't a blizzard that day. Yeah, that was no joke. Uh, that was no joke. Uh, Megan says, I think we should try to give away feminine hygiene products this year. Yeah, isn't that the thing nowadays? Um, I I don't I don't know uh, what the correct terminology is. Uh, are you supposed to say like, uh, uh, hey, are you blood sensitive? Or are you... Uterine, I mean, I don't even know how you ask. Or do you say, hey, you need some tampons? Or do we say, do you need some feminine hygiene products? I guess feminine hygiene products sounds the most appropriate. Appro- appropriate. <laughs> uh, okay. If that's what you want to do, why not? So we would give away 100 uh, Christmas meals and as many uh, feminine hygiene products as we can as we can buy for people who might struggle with that. Okay, if you say so, sounds good to me. Mama Goat Nikki says, "Where do we send money to help?" I'll let you know. We're not that far yet. It, it's it's set up. I just don't. I haven't started talking about it yet. I wanted to make sure everything was all set up in the steps that we do, like get the, get how much it costs before I start directing people. Hey, send money here, send money here, send money here. Um, so we can, we can throw that into the goal. I like that. Um, because last year we bought 200, um, meals and it consisted of each one, a Christmas ham, potatoes, gravy, um, was it stuffing? No. Corn, King's Hawaiian rolls, and a pumpkin pie. Now it's all of that with a side of tampons. Here come the jokes. Kenny writes, are you feeling extra? P- hey, are you feeling extra pissy and craving ice cream and sex in the city? Kyle says, hi, ma'am. You appear to be in a mood. Would you like something to treat that? Kyle points out, yes, it's true. The Grand Rapids Pit Bull Alliance will be there, which they don't just uh, help with feeding pit bulls and getting pit bulls adopted. It's all pets. They will have tons of donated food for all pets, even rabbits uh, to give to people as they pull up. So it's like, Hey, uh, we got your Christmas meal here. And uh, Hey, wouldn't it be nice to uh, not go without a tampon? How about this? There you go. Oh, and yeah, dog food, cat food. Um, who wrote this? Chris D wrote, and to think we can do it without the Zaniacs. Oh yeah. That was the comment back then. Uh, last year I, I doubled the amount of people. We doubled the amount of people served and the Zaniacs were like, oh, it's going to suck. That asshole doesn't have us and our welfare checks. Yeah, we were fine. We, we served more twice as many people. No problem. Uh, Ben Weller says no one, no one else misses the Eric Zane and the Zaniac show podcast. Just me. No, everybody's happy the way it is now. That was a disaster. The, The show was dying because of those people taking ownership of it. The way they did. It was awful, horrible show. Uh, and then Ben adds, the meth kept their energy levels up. 
Every one of those people had fucked up teeth. I'm not kidding you because they would consume so much methamphetamine. Uh, Back to the jokes about giving away feminine hygiene products. Bob writes, hello, ma'am. You smell of pennies. Must be on the rag. We've got a care package for you. Come on. I think that term always pisses people off the most. They say, hey, man, you're on the rag. Yeah, we just uh, keep that one. Yeah, that's considered heavy artillery. You know, when the fight is, uh, when when the argument has deteriorated to such a level that it's, it's you know, complete a complete mess and it's all you're already in deep shit if you drop a yeah you must be on the rag then you're really fucked uh all right yeah that's his that was a that's a wonderful idea by megan uh spending the dough and getting um all those feminine hygiene products kenny adds you shouldn't say, hey, man, are you on the rag? Well, I mean, I guess you could. Tyler says, I heard my wife saying that to her sisters once. I had never heard that term before. I said it to her at home after that, and I thought I was going to be murdered. Megan says, I'm going to start working on the feminine hygiene products, and she ends it with a red drop emoji. God, fucking shit. Uh, Women really do have a uh, number of things that can uh, slow down a given day. That is one of them. And then, of course, pregnancy. It takes a lot of... uh, takes a lot of energy to do that. It's not very equitable what goes on to um, keep the species going on the planet, if you think about it. Those two big things, uh, the the monthly preparing of the machinery to uh, uh, so that procreation can take place accordingly. And then once... The impregnation takes place. That nine month process where the child grows in your belly and the guys just, uh Oh, your job is to just make her happy no matter what. And it should, you should really, really stretch yourself the same way. She's going to be stretched when that baby comes flying out of her. The actual giving birth, if it goes the way God intended it, is going to be very, very uncomfortable. Ben writes, I am compiling a list of reasons why I'm glad I'm a man as opposed to a woman. I'm on 4,194 and counting. Being a woman sounds too hard. You know, I cannot relate really to any of that. So I can't say, I mean, if I, if I could wave a magic wand and live like a woman and, uh, and have a, and have a baby and then determine, okay, if I could experience all the things that a woman experience over a period of time, then I would be able to determine whether or not, uh, it's legit. So it may be, that those are very difficult things. It may be. Probably is. But I haven't experienced it. I haven't had a period and I haven't had a baby. It may be easy. And women may be just, you know, acting and embellishing. But I don't ever decide anything without experiencing it myself. Now, most women will tell you that these things are devastatingly difficult, but 
you don't have really anything to compare it to. You know, you would have to compare it to what men experience, which is just sitting there and doing nothing. So, um, I think to be fair to everyone involved, it is under review as to whether or not pregnancy is even difficult. I can't even get behind this. This, this is ridiculous. Of course, it's more difficult. Of course, it's, it's, it's very, very hard and, and terrible. (laughs) I'm just trying to get you worked up for God's sake. Florida man, 814 says, speaking of Erica Zane, whatever happened to Cardiff? Cardiff's still around. He's uh, doing his stupid shit uh, as a potato over with Carl and all that. I, I, I just can't get into it. I just can't do it. Oh, my God. All right. All right. Uh, this all happened because I was talking about Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV sponsoring Twitch and Facebook. Uh, Blue Frost I, uh, IT sponsors X. Okay. Cole, Cole loves Cardiff. Cardiff is, um, you got to be in the right mood for it. There's um, the Cardiff approach to comedy. And then there's, um, what's the other one called? Hack Ride. Mm, okay. Uh, a goddamn mess. That uh, Hack Ride is an absolute pile of shit. Um, you know of Hack Ride in that whole universe of who are these podcasts and the dabble verse or whatever the fuck it is. I don't even know, which I guess to some degree I am part of it, but not occasionally when I do, who are these broadcasters, which is every week, Tuesdays, uh, Tukey. I love Tukey. Tukey is funny. Tukey soup is a good show. I do enjoy Tukey. Tukey soup. I like that. Um, but uh, who are these broadcasters, which happens today at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern? The hack ride bit is, it's, I'm just not feeling it. And it's fucking horrible. And then they, uh, Christian puts it on there and I'm like, God damn it, dude. All the, mom- all the momentum is lost. This is, sucks god damn uh all right the open and live stream of the show brought to you by blue frost it the managed it service provider for the eric zane show podcast you can get more information at bluefrostit.com so if you have any tech issues within your business at your home uh, Blue Frost IT can help. Give a phone call if you need any of your tech taken care of, whether it be your network, your uh, maybe you're upgrading your systems at work. 616-200-8550. Number one IT company in West Michigan. 616-200-8550 for Blue Frost IT. I suggest this. If at work, Uh, you've got a bunch of old tech that needs to be updated. There's just, there's trouble. You know, this stuff does have, this stuff does not have an unlimited, uh, uh, life. Okay. Eventually you're going to need to replace. Don't just go and start buying things off the shelf. Sit down for a free 30 minute complimentary consultation. You sit down and in that conversation during the consultation, conversation, consultation, uh, Alan from Blue Frost is going to find out what makes your business tick. From there, he'll make recommendations as to what type of uh, gear you should think about purchasing. He'll help you make your purchase, and then he'll set it all up for you. And then he will become your managed IT service provider, like he did all of this for your old pal, Easy. I love Blue Frost IT. Call them at 616-285-50. Also, very, very important right now, Frank Fuss. Uh, You have till December 7th to sign up for Medicare, you old bastards. And it might not be you because you're young and energetic and not ready to retire. But you may have someone in your life who is in this spot who literally they're getting so close to retirement. All they need to do is get their Social Security in order and their Medicare in order. And then, boom, 
Easy street. Relax. Hot tub. Uh, Frank will take care of all of this for you for zero cost. This is uh, one of my favorite things to talk about when I have a sponsor who's offering something for free. And this is not like once in a while it's free. Frank brings the customers to the respective insurance companies for their policies. These people sign up for their policies through either Obamacare, if they're not retired, or um, through Medicare, if they are retired. These insurance companies pay Frank for getting them new customers. That's what a licensed independent insurance agent uh, slash broker does. So you pay Frank nothing. He guides you every step of the way through these challenging processes. There's a lot of time and energy that goes into either setting up your Obamacare policy for you and your family or your Medicare policy. And the uh, enrollment for Medicare ends December 7th. So get on this shit. Uh, reach out to Frank at six one. I'm sorry. Reach out to Frank through his website. Um, buy insurance here.com. That's B U Y insurance here.com. Thank you, Frank. Patrick says Frank whoops ass. Oh, he really does. Um, he's like a football coach. Kyle says, Hack Ride filled in for Blind Mike on Who Are These Socials once. I was only able to listen to about 30 minutes. It was funny. Then it wasn't. Cole says Hack Ride is just the right amount of suck that it's funny on those short segments. It's not. It's not fucking funny at all. It's stupid. It's horrible. It's a guy wearing a fucked up mask going, rah, 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 rah. You can clip this shit and send it to him. He sucks cock. Oh my God. I want to kill myself. I wish I was that guy on that bridge, but uh, instead of surviving, I'd throw myself over the side. So bad. Kenny says, you just described Cardiff. Cardiff's the same thing. He just makes weird noises. There's nothing behind it. It's fucking stupid. Idiots. Jesus. All right. I got to go tinkle. Uh, here we go. I'll be back in just a minute. All right. All right. All right. Uh, ben is in here. Ben, you missed the suicide talk earlier. You'd been all about it. God damn. Uh, ben just finishing up another edition of of X's and bros. I think, I don't know. I think X's and bros ends at nine on the Michigan sports network, which on the next edition of the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast, I think we need to spend more time on the opening of the, uh, X's and bros show. And, uh, as Ben adds, oh, damn, I hung myself this morning and the rope broke. <laughs> what the, the thing that I've really um uh, parked on, and I've had some help from Chris D. Chris D and I, and he's in here, have had some conversations about uh, Ben and Anthony. And the shows always start with Anthony giving like, okay, uh, let's go to Ben. Ben, how are you? Or Ben, hey, what's going on? And then Ben always answers him. And, okay. I think that, <sighs> I think Anthony might be better off not talking to anyone or at least having a, um, uh, wrapping up the conversation because he opens up with, uh, yeah, Chris describes it well with Anthony hangs you out to dry and it makes it so awkward. I don't think this is a Ben Glaze issue. I think I'm hearing more that this is an Anthony issue. Because Anthony will say, ask him like, whatever, how's your weekend? And Ben will start uh, like the other day. He was like, oh man, the lions. That was a, that was a nail biter. Oh my God. And then Anthony will um, uh, start talking and then. He never says, okay, well, that's great, Ben. Thank you. Uh, Ben's in Grand Rapids. I'm in Toledo. And here we go now. I know he doesn't really like wrap it up. 
He just stops talking to Ben. And uh, morning, gentlemen, what was on TV last night? And then Ben will answer. And then all of a sudden, Anthony will uh, steer it to talking about whatever. And then he never like says, okay, Ben, cool. Thank you. It's So Ben has to just assume he's done talking to him every time. And it, it just all of a sudden, he, he's gone. <laughs> That's the extent. There, there's no more Ben being incorporated into the show. Ben says it makes me so nervous. I, I think... Um, that, I mean, if that were me, I would say, okay, let's figure this out because every time it's, it just, it's weird, but I want to make a compilation of, of these moments. I mean, I want to do a whole big super cut of these. I don't even know how to, how, what I could name these things. Awkward with Anthony, Anthony's awkward moment of the day. I really don't think it's a Ben thing. If you, okay, you deal, de- uh, when you deal in Ben's, um, Ben's Benisms, it does make it more palpable. You can feel it. It's like, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> it is spectacular. You've got to hear this. Well, you will hear it because we'll do it on the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. Um, and I like how he always says, morning, gentlemen. And then the one guy doesn't have a microphone. The one guy can't talk. So it's just Ben. Oof. My God. Well, hopefully this won't get you in trouble. <laughs> I don't think it will, but uh, you never know. Uh, all right. Uh, this This is going around. This mom and dad are on a flight. And uh, they 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 shoot a video of what it's like flying with kids. And so uh, mom is in uh, one row. It, mom's in the middle with a kid on her left and a kid on her right. And dad uh, is just watching a movie. And the mom and dad actually made this video to show what it's like. And uh, it's kind of backfiring. Watch, watch this. It's on Instagram. Okay, so dad recorded from his, where he's sitting. So they, they made this at the same, they made this knowing it was going to be silly. So mom's, you know, getting shit out of book bags, helping, getting, uh, having one kid go to the bathroom, uh, whatever, moving seats, <laughs> unwrapping cords for headphones. <laughs> and then dad is just watching a movie. Now, if, obviously the husband was in on making it, but they posted it just to be silly. And, Um, Well, the story is getting traction on people.com because everybody is like killing the husband. And you know how it is. Once one of these stories goes viral, everybody jumps on board and says, yeah, you should leave your husband or you should kill him in his sleep. There's always this crazy amount of outrage that follows it up. And the lady, the wife had to come out and say, yeah, um, that's just the way it works. We made a silly video, but you know, thank you for being so, I guess, so pissed off, but there, there's really nothing that's wrong with this. We're, this is just the way we do it. I guess this is the arrangement where, um, sometimes when kids are young and, uh, they like really like one parent more than the other. Like they, they don't even want dad around or they don't want mom around. It happened, never happened with me, but I've heard about it happening before. And, um, Kenny writes, did they not realize he was recording her part? Yeah. That's the first thing I noticed. He was in on it. It's not like he was, uh, she was, uh, uh, it was a cry for help from mom. It was just a silly fucking video. Mom has to defend dad who sat apart from their family on a plane. 
while some people are accusing a father of weaponized incompetence. That's the term they made up. Weaponized. And you hear about that more and more. Oh, that's weaponized. That's weaponized. His wife says they are just doing what works for their family. A New Jersey mom defending her husband who enjoyed in-flight entertainment while she entertained the kids. 37-year-old Maria Roberts shown sandwiched between five, five-year-old Luca and three-year-old uh, Kaya. When we were on planes, I always did what the mom did. Actually, we traded off. Sometimes I would do it. Sometimes mom would do it. Uh, there were times when we had to be separated. And, you know, for half the trip, Diana would do it. And then we'd change seats. Whatever. Who gives a fuck? All you got to... Your only goal when you're a parent and you have kids there is to keep these motherfuckers quiet by any means necessary. Because just know this. If those little fucks make one peep, everyone on that plane is going to want you all dead. So you work, you do whatever the fuck You do whatever it takes to keep them quiet. If the kids suddenly want mom to sit on their face, do it. You you work, you go the extra mile to keep them quiet. And if for, you know, kids are fucked up. If for some reason, like, I don't want dad around me. Get the fuck out. Get out. You're in a tube at however many thousand feet. Shut up. That's what you do. You do whatever it takes to keep them quiet. You don't You don't uh, uh, enforce rules. Like if the kids suddenly say, I want a Coke. And, and if you suddenly start like, oh, well, we don't drink Coke after 2 p. You start that fucking shit, that new age nonsense. Fuck you. Give them a Coke. If they want cocaine, you give them cocaine. What if they want booze? Drink it. <laughs> Keep them quiet. The good parents uh, uh, give uh, give them Benadryl. You want them sleepy and maybe like twice the dose too so that the heart rate is only like they're beating like 10 beats a minute. Uh, Chris says you had them, you keep them quiet. And you know, you're, you're doing uh, on the plane, they get whatever they want. Just keep them quiet. And, and you got to have the enforcer. Okay. And that's your fist because if they do, if nothing else works, you got to beat them right there. Ben says in that situation, kids know what's up. They will destroy any attempt you make. You put them to sleep by any means necessary. Exactly. And and even if that means you throw them in a rear naked choke. Hojo Potatoes writes, you keep those dogs quiet during your shows. You're darn right. And if they get out of line, that's a problem. Boom, out. Get out. Don't come back. You stick to it. So everybody who's busting this family because of the way they do it, uh, they both need an award. The guy knows his role. If the kids dictate they don't want dad around, whatever. Just live with it. And of course, the big bad internet machine responds with horrible comments about these two. I never expected the comments to be so angry, said mom. I hate that this is still a standard we are promoting. Even young children can learn that dad is a good option and doesn't need to always be with mom. Please, for the love of God, stop reinforcing that dads are incapable, one person wrote. Well, I mean... I don't think, yeah, stupid people would think that. People who have not been on an airplane with a kid thinks that um, there is a, like a, uh, a set rule or plan. Uh, the dad already said, well, if I could have helped, I would have, but my kids hate me. He actually said that. He goes, they, 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 didn't, they don't want me around. That does happen. Give me a break. Um. Uh, the mom says that if dad changed seats with her, the kids would have followed over to mom. 
It's one of those deals. Yeah, anybody who's been on, every, the people that were on that plane, they loved that because these little dicks, uh, look at, look at, here we, you got this wonderful picture of mom is like, uh, is reading with the, with the dude, the, the five-year-old and he's having, okay, where's Waldo? There it is. Yes. And then the people behind her and in front of her are fine. This kid, you notice his feet are curled up. That's because he's not kicking the fucking seat. Good parents, when the kids kick the seat of the person in front of them, punch the kid in the mouth. Bad parents just shrug and go, ah. uh, you are the hardest working person on the plane if you go on a plane with kids. And, you know, you should get to fly for free if you do a good job. Like, you get like a voucher, like a hole punch thing you got on. And uh, you get on there, and then uh, you if you get it punched on the way out, it means you did a good job, and, you're, and your flight is free. It's because you kept your dick kids quiet. Um, Chris says, my niece uh, flew 18 hours to Ethiopia with a one-year-old. She's a saint. What's she doing to go into Ethiopia? Is your, was your niece being trafficked or something? What's going on there? Hojo Potatoes says, I wonder what flight's going to Disney World. Hold on a second. Uh, Kenny says, uh, that's part of being a parent for a mother or a father. If both are around, they'll both have days like that. If not, a single father experiences those same things that single mothers do. Trust me, I've been there. Are you using that just to point out again that you're a single father? Is that is that what's going on there? I'm totally kidding. Uh, Kenny says bad parents would talk to their child about why we don't kick other people's seats. Good parents only have to give them the look. Yeah, I think you go beyond the look on a plane. I think the look is out the window. I think on the plane, if they kick the person's seat in front of them, you just, a sharp elbow right to the teeth. Uh, hey, no more kicking seats. And enjoy your fat lip. Hojo says, just tell the kids if they make trouble, the stewardess can throw them out of the plane. Uh, Chris says his niece, his niece is Ethiopian. LOL. She was going to visit her husband. Kyle says that's why you bring an extra belt on the plane. Kyle's old school. Okay. Now Kyle doesn't have any kids and I don't think he wants them. Now the only way he can have them is if like he adopts them or has a surrogate have them because two boys can't make a baby. But Kyle doesn't strike me as the type that's going to ever have kids. Two things Kyle doesn't have patience for. Baby Jesus, belief in baby Jesus and children. That's his world. I want to thank Megan, who is doing double duty right now. She is sending me some fantastic screenshots of a war that is brewing during the uh, Ottawa County Commission meeting. I believe it's the Ottawa County Commission meeting, which we've talked about so many times. Um, the chat on the Ottawa County Commission meeting is always fun to go on and see what people are thinking and make funny comments about. But a war has erupted between uh, two people that are supposed to be on the same side. There's a fellow by the name of David Barnowski who we have featured on Who Are These Ottawa County Fascists? He's uh, on the good guy's side, as far as I know. 
When, by the way, whenever you hear, that's my phone vibrating because Megan's sending me another screenshot. So she's watching this war go on between David Barnaski and Joe Spalding, our pal who's been on here many, many times. I'm not sure what precipitated this, but these two people that are uh, supposed to be on the same team are warring. David wrote, I will show up after the adoption break. Don't know what that means. Joe writes, you don't have to announce it. Everyone can hear you breathe through your mouth when you enter a room. (laughs) David writes, you just can't help being a jackass, can you? Okay. Megan writes, happy adoption day to these families. Actually, Megan is on there as well as on here. I guess there's, uh, they're announcing adoptions. I guess that's a thing. Joe Spalding writes, David, you can call me a jackass, but it's pure pot and kettle. You're a liability. It's not a name. It's a fact. David writes, curious. You weren't involved. And yet those that were disagree. I'm not sure the context of that. I'm not sure about the context of this. Joe Spalding says, no, let's talk to Jessica about it. I don't know. Jessica, hey. Hey, you motherfucker. Shut up. It's time to relax. Get ourselves a fucking shot of fireball. And just chill out, bitches. <laughs> All right, Jane, you keep your name out of my fucking mouth. You motherfucker. David writes, you can't admit you were wrong. You have been here from the beginning. You always will be. I'm done talking to you, David says. Joe Spalding responds with, when someone tells you you are being creepy, you don't block them from your Facebook group. You stop being creepy. So I guess Joe is suggesting that Mr. David Barnosky was being creepy. Someone told him that and then he blocked him from the Facebook. I don't know. Joe says, I consider people that sexually harass and harm my friends to be my enemy. That includes David. More, the next three are by Joe. He writes, there is this very strong reason why the board of the committee to recall Lucy Ebel made a decision to lock David out of any activity with the recall. They saw the evidence. They kicked Dave out. There's a reason David is no longer vice treasurer of the Ottawa County Democrats. They saw what he did. They cut ties. Now it's all Joe. David has given up at this point. When David pretends he is exonerated or that he did nothing wrong in his mind, his jury was moderators he selected in his own Facebook group. It's pathetic. Is that the Facebook group? uh, What the fuck is that called again? That doesn't matter. I think I'm in that. The actual people who do the real work to resist Ottawa impact on the ground rejected him because he's a liability. People are trying to break up the fight. Heather writes, Switzerland here. All I have to say is I would not want any impact board members proceeding over my adoption. I don't know what the fuck. Okay. Okay. It's ugly. There's a lot going on. And I'm there for it. Oh, God, this is great. Uh, Joe Spaulding with, why would I need drugs when I have your old lady? Total West Michigan shit show on Wood Radio today. Justin Barclay, 9 to 12, and Tudor Dixon, 12 to 3. All right. Uh, Donut Dan says, when the hell does the Ottawa County reality TV show on MTV start? That's the page, Ottawa Objects. Now I remember what it is. The Facebook group. Uh, And Adam says, is that why I haven't seen any recall updates on the Ottawa Objects page? Uh, 
Uh, Blue State Rob says, it sounds like he's talking about Pellerito on Jackie's Facebook page. Brandis says, my favorite voice and facial expression uh, from the Easy Show podcast is, hey, Jackie. Uh, face contortions are uh, the impressions. Always sell it. Hey, Katie, you dumb fat fuck. It's time to really tell you that you're not about to get shit faced with another fucking shy fireball. Um, <laughs> Brandis says gets me every fucking time LMAO it must be funny because when I see it like on the monitor it actually makes me laugh too Aram says what kind of stuff stipend do these commissioners receive there's no way the public is paying them much for this negligence ah you'd be surprised brandis says your eyebrows nearly touched your hairline hey hey they move a lot too if you keep them up there high enough my fucking face actually starts fucking hurting Donut Dan says you got to get some Billy Bob teeth. No. And the only way you can do it is if you really tighten your face up like this. See, so I'm sitting here and then it's all in the mouth. If the mouth goes, as soon as I pull my upper lip back out of the gums of my upper teeth and my lower lip actually goes over my lower teeth, then you got yourself a fucking impression, motherfucker. And then you got to talk while you're holding your face like this and throw in a heavily accent. It's going to create that speech impediment vibe. And this is the way that Jessica Garrett actually looks. She looks, she wishes she was just fucking attractive, frankly. And then those wild fucking gecko like head movements. I don't even know if she does his shit, but I threw it into the impression just for the ridiculousness of it. And then a little lisp like Lou fucking hoax. And then you get Fitz, why are you suddenly yelling like that? And you've got a complete fucking impression there. Fuck yeah. Pettis says, LMAO, stop. I sound like a psycho in my office. <laughs> I, I wish I could get a video of you reacting to it. Uh, Patrick says, Jessica does not seem very appealing. The impression um, that I do of her is actually uh, more attractive than her real face. Her face is can only be described as lumpy. It's a goddamn catastrophe. Uh, Adam says, I'm laughing like a maniac at the other. Well, that's fucking good. We need laughter. That's well, that's I tell you. <laughs> you think you gotta get you. You gotta bring it down and then loud. Loud and then back down to quiet. Fuck yes. And the thing is, she doesn't sound anything like that. She doesn't look anything like that. She doesn't look that good. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, Grand Rapids Gold back in action on Saturday. It's going to be a busy weekend for your old pal EZ. You've got uh, Thanksgiving uh, or Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Friday, you have... um, Hockey. Wayland after. Intersection. Saturday basketball. Come see the Grand Rapids Gold. Play basketball. I want to see you at the Gold game. We had a near sellout crowd on Saturday. Um, And I think that that is the key to getting people in the door. Van Andel Arena. A million things to do downtown. Get your tickets for as low as 12 bucks a pop. 
Grand Rapids Gold. Search them out and you will find their homepage. Click on it and off you go. Buy the tickets and come see me at the Grand Rapids Gold basketball games. Uh, there's also a, um, in the show notes, you click where it says sponsors, Grand Rapids Gold, and get tickets. Bring the family out to see the Grand Rapids Gold in action. Great time. And uh, hoping to get a fucking win. Jesus Christ. Started out rough. But uh, still a great time. I love the athleticism. I love the gameplay. And uh, I love the things that we do uh, when play stops. We have a lot of fun at the Grand Rapids Gold basketball games. Come see your old pal Easy. Thank you to the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Great crew over there working hard to get you into a mortgage uh, whenever you are ready, whether it's your first mortgage or you've done this in the past, all I'm asking is that you uh, reach out to Mario and see how he can help you. That doesn't mean you're committed or anything like that. I just want you to talk to him. Say hello. Reach out. 231-332-6505. That's 231-332-6505 for the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Maybe you need money out of your home. Maybe you've lived in it for a while and you've got equity built up. Okay. I mean, honestly, let's say, um, you know, uh, your, your home is a $150,000 house and you've got the thing paid down to 75,000 left. You're kicking ass, but you know, you want to go on a trip or you need money for Christmas presents, or you want to put a new roof on the house or add an, add an addition uh, borrow from your equity and then you know you just fold that into the loan and you you uh, are gonna add some time on to the uh, uh takes to pay off the balance but i mean that that's your home you want to live in it you want to have uh, the best you want to make sure that you do have a roof on your head uh over your head not on your head roof on your head is gaza you don't want that okay the mario flores lakeshore team of van dyke mortgage bad joke i know 231-332-6505. That's 231-332-6505. There was discussion that, by the way, they found out that that hospital, that was the big the big deal, whether or not that was like a where the uh, where Hamas was. It was absolutely like a Hamas stronghold. Under the hospitals, like tunnels and all these uh, fucking ammunition. Jesus Christ. So uh, now there's negotiations, I guess. And Biden seems to think that there's going to be a ceasefire and a prisoner swap. So that some of these hostages of these psychopath Hamas maniacs um, stole from uh, Israel will be returned. And there could be an end, I guess, for a little bit in the fighting. But what an absolute shit show. You know, I've been alive for 53 years and this has been an issue in all of those years and for decades and centuries prior to that. But this is has been uh, the most unbelievably egregious bit of fighting uh, between the two factions. Everybody's like, well, yeah, but what do you think about uh, all these men, women, and children uh, uh, being uh, injured and killed in Gaza? It's like, look, dude. Israelis minding their own business. Gaza breaks through the fucking fence that they have around their whatever Gaza Strip because they're a bunch of psychopaths who want to kill Jews. They finally break through the fence, start slaughtering random Jews, 1,400 dead, stealing more babies and old ladies and guys with legs blown off, taking them hostage, and then they go mingle in with the citizens of Gaza. What the fuck do you want them to do? Jesus Christ. You know, what drives me nuts is when uh, you see people who are too scared to actually take a stand on this thing. And like, oh, I just wanted to stop. Fuck that. Fuck those motherfuckers up. We, that's what we would do. Fuck, we invaded a whole nation that didn't have anything to do with 9-11. No, no, you go in and you fuck them up. And you, uh, Israel's like, get, you, you better get the fuck out of there because we're going to blow. This whole thing's going to be a rubble. You better move because we're coming. Fuck yes. No, I would have no patience. If I were Benjamin Netanyahu, I wouldn't even have had the restraint that he's had. 
Holy shit. Israel's even dropping leaflets saying, you better leave because this is getting destroyed. All right. So, no, I'm Tim, Team Israel all the way. You fuck them up. You fuck them up and you get your people back and then uh, you, you wipe Hamas off of the face of the earth. Uh, basically, they should just get everybody out of Gaza and put them on an island, like my dad suggested, and then interview every single one of them individually. And then determine if they're in Hamas. And if they're in Hamas, you just shoot them right there and feed them to sharks. Uh, Blue State Rob says, you can make Jessica face and dub Joe Biden's voice in and debate Trump. Funny, too much work. Kyle Ryan says, rates came down last week after the Fed said inflation is slowing down. Good time to get a mortgage. Kyle Ryan is suggesting you call the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage today. Kenny adds Eric dropping more F-bombs than Jason Mews in this segment. I don't know who that is, but I'll take it. All right. We got to talk Jim Harbaugh. Harbaugh is being described as channeling Ted Lasso. Because I think it was in this interview with Michigan fan and Channel 7 news reporter Brad Galley that he does uh, channel his Ted Lasso. I don't know if Joe Martinez is here. Oh, he is. He's going to love this. This is a Jim Harbaugh interview. Uh, let us uh, let us hear what the coach has to say. Jim Harbaugh talks one-on-one with Brad Galley, previewing Michigan's undefeated battle with Ohio State. This is the one. This is the game. It is called the game with a capital T, a capital G. Yeah. What's your anticipation, though? for this for this game against Ohio State uh, the focus is all there 100 uh, percent they're going to use every day minute hour um, leading up to this by the way count the cliches this task and get ourselves ready um, you know locked cocked and ready to rock that's one um, get it get to practice and uh, get our guys ready to go execute on Saturday I, I execute on Saturday that counts as a cliche imagine there you're going to say there's no room for your personal feelings of not being on the sideline but do you let that at all fester at all even when you go home away from these guys to know that you won't be on the sideline with the group this weekend no just amazing amazing group um i mean empowering people um coaches players they're battle tested and they've done a tremendous job leading by example mikey sandwich still player of the uh game guardian of victory this past week big 10 defensive player of the week big 10 Defensive Player of the Week. Congratulations to him. Just, but just so many, so many guys. Uh, you know, we're in it together. It's, it's. Uh... He's, he's a robot. I mean, I, 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 I don't think we've ever heard Jim Harbaugh, um, not speak in these guarded cliches before. It's a family. You know, it's about faith, family, and football. Faith, family, and football. There you go. Yep. It's all about Jesus. And, uh, and we, uh, we get locked into that that mindset one track mind jj's been able to use his feet really really well uh i know he maybe tweaked the ankle against penn state is that an issue going into this game at all his mobility that ankle will that hold him back at all he's going to use every every day hour minute um, um that that's available to him to so he's not answering the question how's his ankle that's all he wanted to, to get know. ready and like every like other guys will be doing the same thing. Which and you don't really expect him to answer because he's not going to reveal whether his star player is is hurt. You know, getting their money maker, getting their uh, getting their bodies ready for this game, and uh, so they can they can use all their tools for for Saturday to the best of their ability. This is the game where you, you throw the kitchen sink at your opponent, the big rivalry game. How much pride do you take as a coach, and how much does this coaching staff take pride in designing plays, putting in packages throughout the year and saying, we've practiced it all year, and you've maybe held it back, a package of play for this game on Saturday? Uh, this interview shouldn't be this boring.
boring. It shouldn't. But you've got Brad Galley, who might as well be a son to Jim Harbaugh and Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, planning, preparing, redundancies, 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 and redundancies. <laughs> uh, you know, every, everything goes into it. Donovan Edwards is one of those guys that, that broke out last year against Ohio State. Uh, you know, all the guys uh, that, uh, yeah, I just, I just can't wait to watch them compete. And, uh, uh, you know, they're in a battle rhythm of doing that. They're battle tested. The, the obvious comparison is his father. Yeah. How do you, um, um, team defense rallying to the ball. Uh, Enough. Enough. I can't, I can't do it. What a horrible, horrible conversation. Uh, Tyler says you can actually see Brad Kelly eye fucking him when he talks. Holy shit. It's true. That's, that's awful. Um, the story was going around about how he actually quote, uh, quoted Ted Lasso, which sounds about right. I mean, uh, Harbaugh is, he's a walking cliche despite uh, excuse me. Despite that noise, our locker rooms in one piece. Harbaugh said Monday before borrowing a line from the fictional soccer coach. And like Ted, for me, a locker room is a lot like my mom's bathing suit. I like to see it. it I like to see them in one piece. <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. Uh, Harbaugh sidestepped a handful of questions at his weekly news conference, including sharing his take on the school not going through with its threat to take the Big Ten to court for suspending him for three games. Well, no, because the only logical answer would be, well, yeah, we were going to do that. And then, um, well, the booster was discovered and the players were revealing a lot of information that was damning to us. And Chris Partridge was uh, busted for stealing the or for uh, destroying the evidence of us paying money to Connor Stallions. Okay, so once this is the honest answer that Harbaugh couldn't muster up to say, as soon as it was revealed that we did in fact pay Connor Stallions through a booster, and we did in fact destroy evidence so that people wouldn't find that out, then we realized it would be folly to sue them. Because um, there's a, a history that's proven that we, in fact, not only cheated, but we tried to cover it up. Okay. So that's why we are no longer even talking about that. We're just eating the punishment and moving on. Uh, I like to see my mom's bathing suit in one piece and, uh, you know, uh, fight for the Gipper. And uh, we're going to give 110%. And uh, there's a game within a game. And um, faith, fun, family, uh, force, and fuck. Uh, we need all those things in order to win. So uh, we got to execute, execute, execute. And we got to keep looking forward. And that's why the windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror. Because you want to see the stuff in front of you big. And you want to see the stuff in front of you small. You got to forget that. You got to have the goldfish mentality. Because game within a game, 110%, fight, fight, fight. At the end of the day, we're still standing. We can go nine rounds with the champ. And then the 10th round, we can get knocked down. And then we pull ourselves up by our bootstrap. We buckle down, get ready to fight, fight, fight. End of the day, 110%. Any more questions? Kuypers, who's a uh, Michigan fan, he says, what a great interview. Blue State Rob says, Harbaugh looks like a cancer patient? What do you mean? I don't get that. Tyler says, somebody make sure that the Harbot has the newest coach cliches update installed before his next interview. Blue State Rob, that Chris K is jacking it to that interview. I didn't realize Chris was a huge Michigan fan. Is that right? I don't think. Oh, no, I see. 
Chris K said, where's Senior Harbaugh, Joe Martinez, to scream no evidence? And Blue State Rob says he's jacking it to that interview. You got to take that, Joe Martinez? These guys are suggesting you were jacking it to the Jim Harbaugh interview. That's horrible. Patrick says, Jim Harbaugh needed to say, you know, it's not how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Eye of the tiger. Tyler wants to know how you say no evidence in Espanol. Great question. Great question. All right. Speaking of Michigan, Brad has an email uh, about all of this. Brad writes, EZ, I am a Spartan fan. This sign-stealing shit is so dumb, and I don't care if he's doing it or not. Any good team with a good stat guy on board does not need to steal signs. So he's like kind of like uh, sympathetic to Michigan fan. He adds, <clears throat> if you really break down film on any team, most of the time teams run the same plays on certain downs. Simple example is third and 10. You know, a pass has to be coming. Not hard to figure out. Now, let me just jump in here. I, I think uh, that that is true. I mean, most teams can figure that out. But if you have the material well in advance, weeks in advance, and you know formations along with signs, that is giving you a jump in a way, especially if you're a quarterback reading the offense. Uh, Because what Harbaugh would do is he would have Stallion steal that shit, and then he would pass it off to J.J. McCarthy and just keep your, you know, so he'd memorize that stuff. He'd know the play. He could audible out. So, Brad, what you're saying is, it's noble for you to say it doesn't matter, but it's it's stupid. It's a it's a it's a dumb fuck comment, is what you're making. So, Michigan fan might have been like, "Yeah, Brad, Jesus, Michigan State fan is like, you know, Brad's stupid, is what he is." That's what that's a stupid comment by Brad. As much as I love Brad, he continues with. Now, before you make the comment easy as a state fan, before you made the comment, make a comment about uh, Mel Tugger and all the sexual misconducts that have happened at Michigan State in the past. At least Michigan State got busted for cool shit and not buying a player a cheeseburger and stealing signs. Thanks. Love the show. So there you go. Brad just suggested that uh, rape is cool shit. At least MSU got busted for, okay, uh, Mel Tugger and all the sexual misconducts that have happened at MSU in the past, at least MSU got busted for cool shit. So I don't know, man. I'm guessing that's just a joke, so we'll take it with a grain of salt. But uh, yeah, I don't don't know if rape is cool. Typical Spartan fan to think that Larry Nasser and Mel Mel Tugger, what they did is something cool. Spartan fans are, are deviants. Uh, Jesus. Ben says MSU also fired the, their coach for the misconduct. They didn't try to justify the actions. That's exactly right. They, they got rid of the fucking idiot. Joe Martinez checks in. Says, that's why Spartans suck. Go blue. Joe, we need to know, how do you say no evidence in Espanol? Okay. How do you say that in Espan- in Espanol? Everybody was asking about that. And that's what Joe's been saying. You need the evidence. But, but, we all know that Chris Partridge deleted the evidence. As he should have. Um, 
I love that he did do that. Jim Harbaugh said, Chris, get to the football office and uh, and and delete all that shit of me. Delete that video of me watching the video that Connor uh, pulled from Michigan State. Delete that video of me giving Jim McElway the CMU head coach and my pal thousands of dollars to let Connor Stallions on the sideline. And Partridge did that. So you're right. There is no evidence. And then Michigan just pays him millions uh, and, and fires him. Chris Partridge, the linebacker coach, that guy made $500,000 a year. Uh, Aram says, Joe is right. Evidence is necessary for prosecution. He's exact, exactly right. It wasn't necessary, though, for what they're doing. Firing Partridge. Michigan not fighting the suspension because they know they're fucked right in the butt. You know what, though? When it's all said and done, it's probably not going to matter. Probably not going to matter. Michigan probably is going to beat OSU. Um, it would be poetic justice if OSU beat Michigan. I love truth and justice in the American way. Okay. So to me, the justice would be Ohio state beating Michigan, Michigan out of the playoffs. They go to the whatever bowl. That would be justice. Aram says, seems like Eric is overcomplicating this. If there is no evidence, then no one can prove anything. No, the evidence is that they caught the guy deleting the evidence. That's evidence. He did delete it and was fired by the football program because he deleted the evidence. That actually happened. You know it because they fired him. And there's a booster by the name of Uncle T. Maybe that's Tom Brady. The rumor is it was Jay Harbaugh who was the booster. And I don't even know who the fuck that is. I mean, I know he's related to Harbaugh. But I don't know what the fuck that guy does. How many fucking Harbaugh's are there? And are they all weirdos? All right. You know, it's a perfect opportunity to mention Joe Martinez and what he does for a living. And that is make sure that your furnace is not dangerous. It's not emitting harmful uh, carbon monoxide. It's clean. It's efficient. And oh, by the way, he's going to do all of this for free up until December 1. Okay. You can schedule your free furnace tune-up right now while spots remain available. So if you are in West Michigan and you have not yet done this, you're a fool. He comes to your house. He tunes, cleans, takes him, what, 40 minutes to get the job done? He leaves. No money leaves your pocket. He then submits that he did the work to DTE Energy, and then they pay him the 79 bucks. This is the greatest thing ever, and there are only two HVAC specialists in the state of Michigan that have this. One on the east side of Michigan and one on the west side of Michigan. Joe is the one on the west side of Michigan. No one else offers that. Guaranteed. How incredible is that? 616-516-8579 up until December 1. The clock is ticking. Reach out to that Michigan fan. He's going to be at the game Saturday. The game. That is... Uh, always the biggest college football game of the year. It has been always, and it always will be. There is no other bigger rivalry in sports. Yankees, Red Sox, no. Uh, I can't really even think of anything that comes close. Michigan has been jail sexing Ohio State for the last two years um, while cheating. 
They will not be cheating this year. Will Ryan Day get his revenge finally? If Michigan jail sexes Ohio State again, will Ryan Day be fired? You can win all your games, but lose to Michigan and you're a loser. Joe Martinez will be there. Uh, Thank you, by the way, to Superior Cleaning and Power Washing. That is Throat Stab Dale. Throat Slash Dale. I call him Stab sometimes. Uh, If you need uh, anything plowed in the Muskegon area, not your wife, just snow, uh, call Dale, 231-740-4098. I think he's pretty much done for the year for Power Washing. Maybe not. Call him. Uh, but also, if you have a uh, restaurant or know anybody who owns a restaurant and they need it clean, janitorial services, hood cleaning, they do it all. Superior cleaning and power washing at 231-740-4098. Okay. We must get into the asshole of the day. Brought to you by TC Paintball. Uh, any suggestions? Talked about Doug's bar trick. We talked about my dad dealing with COVID. Suicide averted. Mom and dad on flight outrage. We talked about that. Talked about Harbaugh. We talked about Brad's fucked up email. I don't even know who to make. I was going to make it Brad, but he's clearly joking. I can't, I can't give somebody the asshole of the day if they're joking. The guy who's going to jump off the bridge? I don't know if we can make the guy who's suicidal the asshole of the day. Uh, ben cross-promoting uh, for the huge show and exes and bros. If you text the word tailgate to 21,000, you can win tickets to the Michigan game brought to you by the Eric Zane Show podcast. So I have a pair of tickets I'm giving away to the Michigan game. All you have to do is tax, uh, text tailgate to 21,000 to win tickets to the Michigan game. We will make the asshole of the day, Jessica. Just because she's a former Zaniac and a scumbag. TC Paintball's asshole of the day is Jessica. You keep my name out your mouth, motherfucker. I will fuck you up. I'll shit on your fucking face and suffocate you with my fucking flabby pussy. That's right. Flabby pussy was... Thanks, folks. I'll talk to you on the Patreon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.